Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. So, money traps to avoid. Like in uh, in football, it's uh, it's uh, very common that uh, agents, especially, they fish for your money. Well, a lot of times I've been delusional on that. We understand desperation can let in the older you get or the more the, the more passionate you are in the game. We understand that. We completely get it, right? Three things you need to consider, right? If the agent approaches you first, run for your life, right? I'm I'm saying right now, no agent is gonna approach you first. That's what scammers do, right? Number two, if the agent or the coach says that, say, oh, um, I need to get a registration fee, blah blah blah. Well, run for your life, right? Um, number three, right? If they can't send you uh, the FIFA license number in terms of the agency, intermediate agency, if they can't, if you can't find them on transfer market, if you can't find them on social, blah, blah, run for your life, right? Number four, right? If you pass all through that, number four, if they don't hop on a call, or a video call, red flag, run for your life, right? Run the fight, right? I, I've got a list because I've been through it, right? Number five, what I would say is, if they don't give you a list of players that they've worked with, run for your life, right? All they're doing is claiming players, oh yeah, I've worked with this player, blah, 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 blah. Number six, Speak to the players that they've worked with. Try getting a, just like a worker or an agent speaking to a club that you've been with and asking an, a manager, oh yeah, what's he like, blah, blah, blah. You can do the exact same thing towards the agent by asking the player that he's worked with, right? If they give you a good reference and they give you a good, yeah, he's a good top guy, blah, 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 this and that, blah, blah, and go for it, right? If if even if if they say oh yeah this guy I just paid him, uh, uh, uh just for the documentation blah blah it was dead cheap blah blah he he actually works blah blah then it can be like well it's an investment blah blah it's just for the documentation, easy, sorted okay, um so those are the money traps number seven right if they start chatting oh yeah send me the money I'm gonna sort out the accommodation uh, everything blah blah and then you go can I sort out my own accommodation and they say no run for your life run for your life they just it's a money scheme so they think oh yeah you already know um, you already know um, that the, the hotel for the week is 200 euros here um, the the the, the taxi does that, and they're charging you a hundred euros for the week. Bro, oh, it's a money scheme. It's a they're moving like the concierge, like a holiday concierge, like travel lodge, or some some crazy not travel lodge. I don't know, bro. Like whatever type of thing, right? Um. So yeah, those are the ones that you wanna avoid. And, Number four, number eight, right? Football camps. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. No. Bro, no. I don't believe in open trials. Don't believe them. Right? It's a money scheme, right? If you have to pay for a trial, run for your life. I don't care if it's one pound or five pound. It's the principle. Because at the end of the day, there's going to be 50 clubs claiming to be their players, but they're not players. There's some African freshies with the worst shoes ever. 
claiming they can play football. Full kit, kitted out. Shin pads about this big. It's crazy, bro. They can't even do their laces, bro. It's wild, bro. And you're thinking, I'm in trials with these crabs. Don't do that to your, for yourself. Don't do that to your mental health because your head's going to go spinning. And in sets football camp, see it, did it. Don't even attempt because it is the most useless thing ever. They're just grabbing your money. Only attend to a trial unless it's a invitation, private invitation only trial. Otherwise, don't go. There in tryouts that is, is private invitation only tryouts where they're asking for your link, they're asking for your blah blah blah. Like the one in the USA, they do tryouts in the USA. Certain ones, if it's not costing a lot of money, then go for it. But there has to be invitation only. Um, go for it. But just recognize only one or two players out of fifth out of like 20, 30 players are gonna get selected for the next trial. So as long as you understand that the chances and the odds are super low, right? And you understand there's two parts of the trial. The 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 big one where there's 30 players, and then the smaller ones where then one, two, three players are integrated into the first team. So that's the second trial, basically. And that's where you're getting assessed. If you have the time and money for that, go for it. If you don't, move on. You'd rather be selected through private integration and integrated into the team rather than wasting your time going through all of that. But if you're limited with choices, then um, obviously go for the ones where you're privately in, in, invited rather than it's just an open tryout, free for all. There's about 100 clubs in there, all walks of life. It's just stress, honestly. Mm-hmm. What about you, Patrick? It's a good, uh, good uh, assessment from you, but I will present to people some other perspective, okay? Team perspective. If your trial is longer than one week, okay? If you play the game, one week trial, you don't get a good, good feedback or you don't get a good, like long enough feedback, run for your life. If the trial is getting longer and longer and longer and longer most likely the team is not interested in you and they, they are just using you as a cone on the training sessions but if you went to a club for a trial and there wasn't a game on the weekend where you could play you can give it one more week yeah you can you agree with me it's mm. it's like mm. it's uh, basically the coach wants to see you in the game have you ever been offered a contract uh, when you have been just training with the team? No. No, never. Yeah, same. So like, even if you if you go to a team and they have two weeks trainings before the next game, you're basically just wasting your time because the coach wants to see you in the game. So mm. like, you, you're going to spend so much money for accommodation, for uh, eating, if you tra- for travel, if you go to, to some, some team, just to train with them and be a cone. And still to get the opinion about yourself after the game, mm. you will not get signed on the training sessions. This is impossible. Mm. Okay. So uh, the next thing I would say is that uh, if the manager doesn't speak to you, it's also a money trap. It's also meaning that you went to a child, but the manager is, is, uh, is hiding away from you. And, uh, and the only positive feedback you get is from the board. They are like, oh, yeah, yeah, we need to bring him here. We need more players. But the manager is giving you the cold uh, cold shoulder. Most likely, you will just, just go on a trial, waste money, don't play the next six months until the next transfer window. Uh, next thing I would yeah. sell, say is be realistic. So uh, when I was uh, 16, my dad uh, got a call from an agent. Again, like as you said, he's contacting so uh, he contacted him and uh, said that oh yeah yeah i have uh, i have seen the uh, highlights of patrick i i think i think he has a great future i would like to offer him a trial in palermo i already spoke to to the academy and they are very much looking forward to 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 see him 
in trading session and my dad was oh okay fair enough yeah and he was he was just okay just you just need to pay me uh, 2000 euros so i can uh, arrange the accommodation and everything and my dad was like oh yeah if it's palermo then it has to be legit so uh, he sent the money never heard of him again too good to be true yeah and then the last uh, the last no, thing that, agree. the last thing that i wrote in my notes is uh, if you're dead poor okay if you're dead poor and you go to the team and you see the fine list the fine list is ridiculous that's a money trap for you bro if you get a fine and you're not able to pay it because you're broke the team teammates will not like you Mm. They will just use every opportunity just to just to fuck you because you you don't mm. want to pay the fines. Mm. So uh, that's like one of the underrated money traps. Just just when you think about signing for a team, just ask about the fines, fine mm. list. One thing I would say is if you're in a team and you're training and you're trialing, especially abroad and obviously you're spending all money. Um, what I would say is uh, assess the situation. Like you said, let's say if you're a right back, like or a full back or whatever it may be. Look at the team. If the right back is the captain, then the second position is the vice captain. Or you're looking at the team and there's about five right backs. What are you doing there, bro? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, alarm bells, bro. The first thing I asked in the first training session, bro, how are you? Well, uh, how old are you? Da-da-da. What position you play? Blah, blah. And I find out, and I find out, and I find out, and I find out. And then uh, you're doing the numbers that like, there's six right backs. There's two of them from the academy. So the, obviously they've got to promote them from the academy. Then this, he's the captain. Did it. Am I going to outplay him? No. Why the hell are you there? And then you're getting a cold shoulder from the manager. And the manager's not introducing himself, blah, blah. And the friendly, blah, blah. And the, the worst one, like, when the manager, first training session, been there, like, when the manager does not integrate you in the warm up spot, fun for your life. Especially if it's like a 1v1, it's really and it's like a, 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 you know what I mean? Like a fun drill, whatever, like a little warm up, and you're not involved, fun for your life. Or when he's doing the set pieces or um possession play and, bro, and he's putting it to the side, bro. Just for your life. Just get a return ticket, bro. My advice as well: never, ever book a return ticket when you when you book the it's a, a one way ticket. If that makes sense, because a you never know how long you're gonna stay, and b in case of emergency you need to come back home. Right? You don't waste money. That's how much money I have. The amount of times where I booked a return ticket and I had to stay longer, don't do that. Um, so just book a one way, see how it works out, and then if you need to book a return ticket, you'll know within a few days. Just because uh, this podcast is boys only, I'm uh, gonna say something controversial. It's uh, if you get a girlfriend, okay. If you feel like, oh yeah, it would be nice to have a girlfriend so I can have somebody to talk to. Oh, it would be mm. nice, yeah, bro. The girlfriend is also a money trap. Do you really think that she will help you on your journey of becoming a professional football player? Depends. Okay, depends. But uh, depends. Depends. Most most the majority, cases. No. Yeah. Because they want to be wind and dined. They yeah. want to be treated. They want to be a, a princess treatment. They want you to 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 like I don't know travel to them, especially if they're living far away. They want you to um, spend a lot of quality time. Uh, have the quality time, fair enough. But if you don't and you're broke, well, uh, come on. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, prioritize your time a bit more wisely. That's what I would say. One more, one more. Uh, invest in your gear. Like, ideally, you want to imitate professional football players. And, like, you don't see a professional football player using shoes that are just, just uh, amateur level or they are too small for you or too big because uh, your mother is saying that you will grow to it so uh, you need to even your your bro even though you're broke you need to invest in your football gear 
So that's like mm. one uh, one time one thing of investment that I would say: invest in your gear. Mm. You cannot. <laughs> the amount of times I'm seeing players that are using the same shoes and just taping taping the tip of the toe, you know, uh, together, bro, because the the, oh. the shoe is slowly is falling away and they are just taping it. I'm just like, bro, move on. <laughs> oh, I seen that too many, bro. Oh uh, my days. What I would say is like, keep it simple, keep it basic. In reality, do you need a normal tech? Nah. Mm. Do you need a massage gun? Nah. Do you, do, do, do you need like, I don't know, a special cold, cold ice bath tub, you know, them lumen or whatever you call them? No. no. Do, do you need, um, I don't know, do you need, I don't know, like, uh, an yeah, electrical do. stimulation? That, yeah. Nah. Like, you need to understand what's a priority, what's necessity, and what's an accessory or like a, a, an extra thing. You don't need that. That extra one percent is only for the pros that are already there. So that extra one percent, but just focus and keep it simple. Make sure your know, nutrition is right. Making sure you you get the right supplements if you're deficient. I don't know if you've got vitamin D deficiency or whatever. Making sure that you're yeah you're, you're hydrating right and making sure you're sleeping you're sleeping right. If you need to invest in things that will help with your sleep, whether it be red lights, whether it be uh blue light blocking glasses, whether it be yeah. Fine, that's good, but focus on things that are uh, on the basis of three things: your sleep, your nutrition, and your performance, which is your gear, like your boots, just stuff like that. That is it. Yeah, especially that I see many players buying the grip socks. Bro, it doesn't work. Just, just let let's be honest. The grip socks doesn't work, <laughs> and like if you if you buy grip socks because you blame it on blisters, that's why I'm getting blisters. Right, it's because the socks that you train in, you don't replace them. Like you use the same socks, so the same Nike socks you used in your in your uh, elementary school. You are you're using uh, when you're nineteen. <laughs> so like yeah. you need to, like I would say, you need to replace your socks. I would say every two three months, to be honest, because mm. they get worn yeah. out, and that's why you get blisters. So like. Mm. Uh, Grip socks doesn't work, bro. No, it depends. It, each, as I said, each to their own type of thing. It's not like uh, it's a more of a preference rather than a necessity, if that makes sense. Um, well, like I say, um, look at your budget and see if it allows, and that's it, really. Um, but for the majority, keep it simple, stop yeah. overcomplicating things. Um, so that's my advice. You need to make the tier list with the priority priorities so nutrition mm. sleep uh, recovery is the priority and the additional things like norma takes like uh, i don't know massage guns this is the the 0.1 percent that you, you you buy when you're a professional football player mm. like this is something that that uh, is it's like a supplement that you use it to enhance your performance but there is no no sense for you to mm. take the supplements if if your diet is crap. Hundred percent, hit the nail in the head. But I think that's it in terms of like what you should invest the money traps that you should avoid in the, in the game and what needs to be done, how to prioritize and how to um, maximize your potential. Yeah, well, last last thing because that's an important one. Your diet, okay? If you're broke. And you need to buy food. You don't buy pizza just because it's cheap and you need to leave it below your means because you need to yeah. save up. Okay? You buy the chicken with rice. So like yeah. I don't give I don't give a fuck if, if you're broke, you still don't buy pizza, you buy the healthy food. Yeah. It's better to buy a GMO alternative of a paprika than to buy sweets. You understand? Mm -hmm. So like uh, many times, many times when I was especially broke, I was eating pizza because I was thinking, okay, so this is costing 35 coron and I can save mm -hmm. more money on buying pizza and if it, it will give me more calories instead of buying chicken breast with rice. It's genius. I will save mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Bro, mm -hmm. the performance. 
Ja. Så når man må må sige, så har vi sat det. The cheap guy always pays twice. Mm. <laughs> That's as simple as that. Just because we're always saying, oh yeah, obviously organic option and the healthier is better, obviously, but we understand it's expensive. I don't have the of the GMO or the whatever. Um, and then rather than go for the like I said, the, the, the fast food option, there's no point. Um and like I say, um a good tip, go to farms or go to local shops and stuff like that. They're there, they're cheap. Don't go to commercialized but um like cheap markets like Tesco, blah blah, blah markets. It's like it's not hundred percent fresh, but let's say instead of buying things, to, it's gonna be fresh for like one or two weeks. Buy things where it's gonna be fresh for like one or two days, so you can use it straight away. Does that make sense? Because it's gonna be a lot cheaper mm. on the market price. That's what I used to do, and that's what I still do. To be fair, it's still healthy, it's still fresh, and it's and it's the better better option. Or what you can do is you can buy them in big books. You can do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. When you go to the market, you need to understand that 90% of the stuff is just useless. You're just being uh, advertised. You just, oh, okay. Uh, these new uh, new chips, new lace. Uh, nice. New mm-hmm. pizza. Uh, big boss. Uh. Bro, this is all ad- advertisement for you. All your focus is Let just... Me- Healthy, healthy stuff. Let me give you a big tip right there. There's a big advice, by the way, but never food shop when you're hungry. Never. 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 Don't do it. Yeah. Your eyes is hungrier than your stomach. I promise you, right? Yeah. This is what you do. You always go in your foot, right? Yeah. Number two, you always go in there with the list. So you're not um your eyes are not wandering everywhere your eyes is wandering on the list that's it bam 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 then you're gonna only spend there for 10 minutes rather than like oh oh like a woman do you know what I mean you're not a woman you're here to get stuff done like right? job done blah blah and then get out but yeah big tip never go never do food shop when you're hungry ever with that note we sign out See you guys next week. See you guys. And we'll speak soon. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.